I think there's a, a problem that emerges when we talk about artificial intelligence, that people assume that there's a type of magic that happens, that essentially these deep learning systems are so sophisticated that they're seeing deep truths inside images that people cannot see. But the reality is that in order for these systems to see at all, they have to be given a training set, which is the base layer. It is the, it is the sort of Rosetta Stone of the world. And what is fascinating to me is the creation of those Rosetta Stones are done by humans. So all of these labels, certainly in what is called supervised machine learning, for supervised machine learning, humans have to actually create those labeling taxonomies. So in the case of ImageNet, ImageNet is very famous because in 2009, when it was first published, it was the first one to do two things. First, create such an enormous set of 14.1 million images. But secondly, it was the first to use Amazon Mechanical Turk. So a series of distributed workers around the globe, people being paid very, very little for minute tasks, essentially digital piece workers, who were being shown these collections of images and being asked to label them. So those labeling taxonomies are, are in fact being monitored and surveyed by humans. So ImageNet is fascinating to me because you know, for a period in time, ImageNet was the largest user in the world of Amazon Mechanical Turk. It was number one. So it really is in some ways this kind of breakthrough set, both for artificial intelligence and for its logics, but also for the use of Turk workers. And in both of these, I think we have to ask more questions around how automation is in many cases really just people behind a screen producing the so-called magic of AI. So in some ways, I mean, we think about this as like sort of the, you know, the Wizard of Oz. You get to pull the curtain away and instead of this great intelligence, you just actually see millions upon millions of Turk workers who are being paid a few cents per hour for doing large numbers of tasks. But it's also, there's another aspect to ImageNet as well, mm. wh which I think is also important in this story, which is that it created the precedent that it's okay to just go on the internet and kind of collect whatever images from people's Flickr accounts that you want, appropriate them, pay somebody else to label them, and then use those as the basis for uh, you know, machine learning systems. And that, that kind of, that attitude of the appropriation of people's data without their consent and without asking them how they want to be labeled, if, if they want to be labeled at all. That is another kind of uh, precedent that gets set with ImageNet as well. One of the terms I use in that sense is this idea of extractivism. Like, what is it to do extraction at scale? And ImageNet was really the first to do that type of real extraction from the entire internet, to really just take as many of other people's images as it could possibly harvest. And so I think that that, that sort of idea of how extraction actually underlies artificial intelligence is quite a profound one, that we actually might start to think of AI as an extractive industry in the same way that you might think of the coal and oil and gas industries. Because in a way, it only works because of that extractive logic.